Afrenio Costa Filio is a Six Sigma Master Black Belt with 20 years experience at Ford Motor Company. Um, he holds a master's in welding automation and is a doctorate student in computer science and is a, um, really interested in Six Sigma and Python. In his free time, he enjoys programming in, in Python, especially with an Arduino and Raspberry Pi. And tonight he's gonna give a talk about intro to MicroPython uh, with Matt Raspberry Pi. So please welcome Matt Frenio. And uh, you got to start. Well, thank you very much, Dan, for this opportunity to present here the subjects about uh, um, um, microcontrollers and MicroPython. Uh, thank you all to join this meeting today. And um, the plan for today is to uh, give you a brief introduction about the subject, uh, microcontrollers and MicroPython. And for sure, have fun. This, because this is what about microcontroller is, OK? OK, let me um, show here some uh, contact links. I have a YouTube channel. And uh, here we have the QR code for my LinkedIn um, page that we have all the, the contact lists and so on. OK, please feel free to contact me if you have some questions or uh, have some comments, OK? OK, done, and let's get started. This is the agenda for today. We talk about a little bit about the microcontroller boards, what is about, uh, what is MicroPython. This is the main topic for today. Um, I, I talk a little bit about the um, circuit Python as well. And then we talk about the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, how can we set it up? Um, we explain a little bit about the EREPL um, shell. Um, we use the Tony IDE. And uh, the idea is to run some codes and have fun uh, with the Raspberry Pi Pico. And to finish, we have a Q&A section, OK? Yeah, Move on. Then, uh, how about the microcontrollers? What is a microcontroller? A microcontroller is a PC in a ship, OK? And uh, uh, inside the ship, we have uh, memory, we have CPUs, we have input, output, peripherals, controllers, and so on. Then um, is uh, uh, very suitable to embedded applications because uh, the lower consumption uh, power and the uh, reduced size. Then here we can see, uh, I think that one of the most famous uh, microcontrollers in the market, the AT Mega 328P that compound the, the, the Arduino one's board, okay? And here we can see the RP2040 that is a brand new microcontroller from Raspberry Pi Foundation and has just released in January 2021 that we can uh, set up to use um, MicroPython, Circuit Python, and even C, C. Okay. Let's move on. Well, here you can see the uh, Raspberry Pi Pico board that we um, get in more detail in the, the next few slides. Um, here we can see the RP2030 microcontroller. And here we have the um, most uh, uh, common Arduino, the Arduino Uno that use the 80 mega. This is one. And here we can compare the size of the two boards. And we see that the Raspberry Pi Pico uh, have a lot of resource um, uh, to uh, have fun with the uh, development of projects and so on, OK? Let's move on. And what makes the microcontroller so funny? 
uh, here we can see a lot of features and device that we can connect and control uh, through the microcontrollers. Then here um, we can see uh, OLED LCD, Bluetooth modules, temperature sensors, Wi-Fi uh, modules, um, joysticks, and so on. Then we can uh, connect the devices in a microcontroller and control uh, by programming the microcontroller and have fun with a lot of possibilities of uh, projects and developments, okay? Then we go on. And here we can see uh, EDE, that is an integrated development environment. This one is an example from the Arduino EDE. Then we use um, uh, then we use the R, the C language to set it up the Arduino, and here we can see an example uh, just to blink uh, LED one using the the Arduino, and here you can see uh, two piece of codes one is a setup area that we uh, set up the pin modes and the uh, devices and so on. And the other piece of code that we have a loop that we goes through the code and repeat until you uh, stop the code, okay? This is the Arduino environment. This is well known uh, for microcontroller guys. In this next slide, we can see the uh, MicroPython um, EDE. And here uh, we have a similar code to uh, Blink uh, internal LED from Raspberry Pi Pico board. Then um, we can see that the code is, um, you know, more um, lean and more suitable and easy to learn when you compare with this C++ um, from Arduino as well. Okay, then here you can see the blink that happened. Okay. Then um, before we go to talk about the MicroPython, I, I just uh, uh, want to talk a little bit about Python 1. The Python is a high level language. That means that is uh, close to natural language that we use. Uh, one important goal of Python is uh, keep it fun to use. Then the, uh, the Python language is uh, easy to learn and heavy fun uh, to coding, uh, very intuitive uh, language. Um, sometimes we just need to think in English, then we can discover how to, you know, code some Python lines. And this fun, um, you know, um, uh, direction is, is reflected in the language name that is a tribute to British comedy group, Monty Python. I have more than 40 years old and I remember of Monty Python uh, movies in the eighties and the, it was very fun. Uh, a, lot of think, a lot of people think that is uh, based on the snake, not, but uh, actually it's a tribute for Monty Python one group. Um, here you can see a uh, run chart showing the uh, increase of the adopters of the Python years over year. Um, I think that's a mic open. Uh, okay, thank you. And here you can see the, the, the increase of the adopters of Python language over year, uh, year over year. And um, uh, one um, that uh, uh, points that I think that's important for this increase is the flexibility that we can use um, um, uh, several libraries that's available 
uh, to uh, develop uh, different applications, uh, even in a web, in a data science, in a game, and so on. Okay, and let's get move on to the MicroPython. Okay, then what is a MicroPython? MicroPython is a lean and efficient implementation of the Python tree program. Then a small subset of the um, a regular Python that you can implement in the microcontroller and use the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Python language to uh, program in the microcontrollers and control the device and the, uh, the GPIO ports and so on. Um, here you can see a pie board that was created by MicroPython organization. And uh, here you can see the pinout uh, of this board that we can connect to different devices. The, 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 this board has an ADC, analog digital converters, and uh, uh, you can, uh, it can support uh, a lot of um, different protocols of communication like I2C, um, UART, and uh, so on, okay? Then we have here some specs about this uh, microcontroller. It is a Cortex CPU. We have a, a one mega um, internal flash. And we have a, a, a 192 uh, kilobytes of run and have a maximum frequency of 168 megahertz, okay? This is the MicroPython one. And uh, let me show you quickly the, the page of the MicroPython. This is the site of the MicroPython. And, and here we can see more specs and uh, um, you can um, buy uh, a board and get the butt loader and so on. Okay. Then uh, what about secret Python? Then we have a micro Python and secret Python today that we can use in the microcontrollers. Uh, the secret Python is, uh, is just a fork of micro Python. It's based on micro Python. And um, here you can see some um, comparison between the circuit Python and micro Python. And about the circuit Python is a beginner friendly. Okay. Um, is already enable um, floats uh, for all builds. The error messages are translated into more than 10 languages. But one thing that it's not well supported is the concurrence is that we can uh, we cannot run um, parallel um, routines in the same time okay and the micropython we have some advanced uh, resource like uh, control the interrupts and threading we have a complete pio api it means that we have um, uh, easy code to control internal uh, resource from the board. And um, you can use a MicroPython codes that's already uh, is, uh, um, you know, easy to find in the internet and so on, okay. Let me go to the next slide that we uh, start talking about the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is a brand new uh, board from Raspberry. It's the first uh, microcontroller uh, from Raspberry Pi Foundation. Uh, the boards that we have on Raspberry Pi is a small uh, is microcomputer. It's not a microcontroller. Then the Raspberry Pi Pico is the first one microcontroller from Raspberry Pi. They use a dual core REM Cortex M0 plus processor 
that can run uh, at uh, up to 133 megahertz. We have a two megabyte of onboard flash memory, um, lower power sleep and dormant modes. That uh, uh, means that uh, we can optimize the, the battery um, and capacity in the uh, projects. We have an easy way to programming using drag and drop um, files like you know a Windows or a Linux and so on. We have 26 uh, GPIO pins that we can connect different peripherals, different devices to control. We can use different protocols that we uh, have in the marketing. We have 12 bit ADC and uh, uh, as well PWM channels that we can modulate the signal um, to control like a, a velocity of the motor or a brightness of a LED, okay? Uh, we have internally resources like a accurate clock and time on chip. Then we can assess the time and use it in, uh, 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 in our code that I, I will show you in the next few slides. We have a temper sensor that you can use this information as well. Uh, we have a selective floating point libraries on ship and in eight programmable IO, PIO state machines that we can assess uh, internal resource of the, uh, of the board, okay? Uh, we have a, a, a large documentation available and it's a good thing for microcontrollers um, because uh, uh, we, we need the documentation to learn how to use the resource of the boards, then it's very important to uh, developers to, to have a, a large documentation available, okay? And um, just to uh, an example of the, the, the you know, the power of this um, board, you can run a TensorFlow light. Uh, here we have a, um, a link to YouTube um, a video that shows how can you use a TensorFlow light uh, inside of the Raspberry Pi Pico to um, uh, recognize uh, images and so on, okay? Here we have a link to the documentation. Let me show you the site uh, that we have uh, documentation of the Raspberry Pi Pico. Then we have some um, options of boards. And here we can find uh, the documentation and the bootloader um, configuration, how can we uh, change the, the bootloader for the newest newest versions and so on. I will show you a little bit about this in this presentation. And here we have the specs from the, the, the board, the pinout of the board and so on. Then it's a, a large documentation that we can use. We can use also C, C++ to programming the, 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 the Raspberry Pi Pico. That's not a, a subject of this presentation, okay? Good, let me go back to the presentation. Let's move on. Okay, then uh, here we can see um, um, my uh, um, devices here that we use to run the codes in the next few slides. And here um, we show in the, how can we change the bootloader and to uh, update the versions of MicroPython, no bootload, or upload the circuit Python or even the C++ interpreter, okay? Then we have a, a button, a boot cell, and we hold it down when we plug in, in the computer and we open the file explorer that we just uh, drag and drop the new one bootloader and we will has that the, 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 the board and it's ready to use, okay? Um, 
let me show you here um, a USB rub that I really um, suggest to uh, buy with you um, using uh, microcontrollers because here you can turn on, turn off the, the microcontroller um, and avoid it to plug in, plug out every time that we need to reset or something like this, the, 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 the board, okay? It's an easy way. Let's move on. Okay, uh, for this section, we use the Tony IDE to make some codes and to run some codes uh, using Raspberry Pi Pico, okay? This is a, a, a funny and easy uh, IDE, uh, even for uh, regular Python or MicroPython. Here a link to um, uh, download and install, okay? And um, we can use in the uh, Tony IDE, the shell that we call REPL, the read of our printing loop to direct um, uh, 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 write commands to the microcontroller. No? Then we um, send uh, directly commands using the shell and get the response from the Raspberry Pi, Pi Pico, okay? Here we have a link also to see the documentation, how this work. Then um, let's start to uh, run some codes and have a fun, okay? Then let me go out to the presentation and I bring here a uh, second cam that are focusing on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Okay, let me show that it's working now. <laughs> and let me open the Tony IDE that we can uh, control our Raspberry Pi. Okay, then let me turn on the Raspberry Pi. Okay, this is turning on. And now we have here the IDE that we can use to program them. Uh, let me start the Tony IDE because I need to turn on the Raspberry Pi first. Okay, here we are. Let me just stop the, the automatic codes that are running. Okay, then we have a shell that we send commands directly to <coughs> board and get the response from there. Okay, just put a simple print and here we are, we have the response from Mm, um, microcontroller board, okay? Um, we can open some codes from Raspberry Pi Pico as well. Then we go here, Raspberry Pi Pico. Then this is the codes that we um, already save in, inside of the Raspberry Pi Pico, okay? And the first um, that we open here to see working is a hello pi. Then we can see that we use a, a simple Python. I'm using a for next loop. And I run and print the hello pi code 10 times here in the shell. Then we just run over here and we get the response over there, okay? Um, let um, now blink the internal LED that we have in the Pi Pico. I'm open the LED blink Pi code. Then here we are uh, importing the machine library that uh, get access to the internal resource that we have in the Pi 
uh, Pico board, okay? Then I'm importing the pin uh, library that we can set up the 25, the pin number 25 that is uh, connected to the LED, the internal LED. And here we have a loop section that I use the toggle uh, method that um, change the state of the port that we uh, are uh, running, okay? Then if the port is high, the toggle um, changes to low and vice versa, okay? And here we have a slip for one second, just to make the LED blinking. Then I run the code. Then we can see here the LED blinking. Okay. Um, the next code is use the uh, callback. That's a resource that we can set up internally in the uh, microboard. Just uh, make a comparison. I will run this code again. And we can see that we can't write some additional commands to the Raspberry Pi Pico that is buzzy, okay? Then when we use a callback resource, let me bring the code here. This is a test Pi. Then we can, uh, uh, when we set up the callback resource, then we have uh, the LED blinking, but the shell is open to put additional commands and run additional routines, okay? Then it's a, a concurrence um, running that's good for some applications uh, that we uh, need to run in parallel to um, codes and to routines, okay? Good. Uh, the next example that I have here is to control the brightness of the LED using a PWM uh, resource from the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, let me open the code that LED PWM. Then here we can uh, use the resource for the, 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 the modulate signal in the pin 25 that the LED is, is connected. And I um, uh, change the uh, signal, the wave frequency of the signal that make the LED um, um, uh, change the brightness when we run the code. Let's see if this happened. Okay, then you can see that the brightness is increasing and uh, repeat after 0.1 seconds, okay? Good. Um, the Lexus example that I have is how to read a internal temperature sensor that we have on the, the, the Pi Pico board. Then we go here and open a temperature code to pi. Then uh, we use a ADC, the analogic digital converter uh, that are uh, connected to the pin four internally. And uh, we make some conversions to get the um, number of uh, temperature in, in Celsius degree, okay? And we, Wait for two seconds to read again. Then let's see this card working. Here we are. This is the real temperature that we have here in the North of Brazil right now. Uh, here is 80, uh, 40 p.m. now, and <laughs> it's very hot. Okay. Good. Um, we can uh, also uh, read the date uh, from the internal clock of the board. Then let me open 
more one codes time now um one thing that i uh, uh learned today is that don't use the time point to pi name for this codes because we <laughs> We get in conflict with the time point to pi resources internally. I think that the the Raspberry Pi Pico board have, and uh, uh, you, you get in a an infinite loop that I need to, you know, reset the board and uh, uh, start the, the bootloader because um, we have a don't use just time point to pi. Then I use time now just to avoid the conflict, okay? Then here I use the RTC, that's the real-time clock, in, that's a resource that we have inside of the board, and the U-time library to um, sleep for two seconds inside the loop. Then we see a tuple of eight characters that uh, shows the complete date and hour that we have now from a real-time clock uh, from Raspberry Pi Pico, okay? Then we can use in the development of some alarm or um, some uh, development that use, uh, that need to use time and clock, so. Great. And to finish the codes, the, the, the last code that I have here, it just to show is just to show you how can we uh, automatically run a code when we turn on the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, it's a simple <laughs> like that. We use the name main.py and all the codes that we have inside of the main.py is automatically start when we turn on the um, the board. Okay, just to show you how this working, I turn off and turn on the Raspberry Pi Pico, and this code just changes the brightness of the internal LED, and it starts automatically when I turn on the the board, okay? Good. Let's go back to the presentation. And we can hear the, you can see the, the codes. And just to finish the presentation, here we have some reference, some channels and in YouTube that I use to learn uh, about uh, microcontrollers, about Python. I think that uh, one of this that uh, you can, you already uh, know and use, the, the, the good channels that um, I really recommend to, 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 to follow, okay? And um, to finish, I just like to thank you all for this opportunity to show you uh, something about the MicroPython, the microcontrollers, then thank you, obrigado, gracias, and we uh, can go to the Q&A section. Thank you, Dan. Any questions, anyone? Yeah, hi, uh, this is Sam. Um, I have two questions. Um, uh, the first one is, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, sure. So uh, are these microcontrollers, uh, are they usually uh, like program specific designed or uh, can I take uh, Raspberry Pi Pico and can use any uh, programming language to write on it? No, actually they, they, they have support for some language. Well, um, for today we have support for MicroPython, uh, Circuit Python and C, C++. We, we can choose and change the bootloader internally for the microcontroller and use a specific one of these three languages to programming, okay? Okay, and the second one I had the, the ID that you showed in the Pico, 
do we have to use that or can we externally use other id to develop our code and then run on pico uh, uh, okay great um uh, and we use uh Tony EDE, that's a more, you know, easier one to, to use, but we can use uh, Arduino EDE uh, as well. And Platform IO, that's a more, you know, professional um, environment to, to, to programming the microcontrollers. We have some options, different options in the, in the market. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Rich had a, another question. Um, what came first for you, Python or microcontrollers? No. <laughs> um, uh, I, 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 I suggest you start with Python, you know, and uh, um, because we need to, you know, um, know a little bit the, the, the language to use microcontrollers. But um, um, this is a you know uh, some uh, revolution that was uh, uh, happening in the world of microcontrollers because um, C and C++ already uh, uh, is a, a big one uh, applications that we that we use. But um, the use of Python, the, the Marco Python, is increasing a lot, and the documentation is uh, more available. And uh, uh, maybe we can see in the next few years uh, the, 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 the increase of the use of microcontrollers and Python and MicroPython. I don't know if I uh, answer in the right way. Thanks for that. I, I think there, he was also asking whether you learned microcontrollers first or Python first. Oh, um, I, I, I learned microcontroller first. Um, using the C and C++. And, uh, and after I um, get uh, the, uh, my uh, um, uh, learn Python, I um, use Python. Actually, um, I'm, I'm getting uh, Python to the Six Sigma as well. And uh, uh, I, I launched in the, 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 the 2019, uh, green belt and black belt curse using Minitab and Python to um, um, analyze the data because I think that's uh, uh, it's all about. Okay, thanks. Um, we had another question for David who is asking if you have any thoughts about tiny ML on microcontrollers um, and about kind of using AI on the edge by, by yeah, putting those microcontrollers. Uh, uh, sorry, then can, can, can we repeat it for, it's for? Yeah, sorry about that. Do you have any thoughts on using tiny ML on microcontrollers? Yep, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, I think that's, uh, uh, it's very suitable for embedded development uh, devices. And um, it's it's good to use the TensorFlow Lite and so on to use the AI um, libraries in uh, microcontrollers as well. Any other questions, anyone? Um, I'm kind of curious. So Python uh, would certainly be a useful tool for like hobbyist stuff, right? It's very easy and approachable to use. Uh, I'm curious though, if there's a bunch of commercial applications where you would be able to do this, I can see where if you can, you know, use Python to bring in ML, um, that would be very, very useful. But, uh, you know, given things like having to deal with garbage collection and stuff, do you, are you aware of any commercial applications where um, Python would be a suitable solution for it? Uh, uh, it's about a micro Python. You you, you, you're, you're seeing, you're talking. Um. Uh, yes, let me simplify that real quick. So um, is MicroPython something that would be suitable for commercial application as opposed to something like C or C++? Oh, yes, for sure, for sure. Um, actually, uh, 
uh, the use of MicroPython um, is increasing because the uh, is is easy to learn. Then it's powerful as um, C and C plus plus. As we increase the number of uh, resources and libraries available in the in the marketing, and um, I think that in the few years uh, we uh, have a, a big increase in to use in MicroPython instead of C C plus plus because of the um, it's more simple, it's more suitable, and more you know easy to to learn. It was one more question in chat from Rich on whether you use, have you used Jetson for machine learning? Uh, uh, sorry, Dan, can you repeat? I, I can understand. Yeah, sorry. So have you played with Jetson, which uh, I think is a machine learning library? Oh, um, uh, no, I, I don't have experience in Jetson, OK? But um, as I know, it's a, a, a good um, uh, board, but you know, it, it's not. I, I think it is not a microcontroller. It's like a Raspberry Pi board, that's a small uh, computer, small PC. It's a little bit different because um, when we have a, a small PC, we have a discrete components, um, and then uh, it's not everything enclosed in the in the microchip. Okay, then we um, have a, a, a mini PC or something like that. That's very powerful yet. Any other questions, anyone? Um, there's another question for Sam about IDEs and a question about which IDEs do professional use, professionals use for Python. Uh, for IDE, I, 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 the IDE that I know that's more um, professional is a platform IO. Um, I'm not sure if it's a free, if you have a, a, a free version uh, or just to, uh, we need to buy a license, but it's uh, um, as a more professional and uh, we have a lot of um, uh, advanced resources to programming uh, microcontrollers. Sam, was your question just about microcontroller programming or? just in general for Python. Yeah. Um, in, it, yeah, so he's asking in general. I, I think the other two very popular IDEs are PyCharm, which is yep. by JetBrains, and then um, VS Code, Visual Studio Code by Microsoft is also really popular right now. And there's lots of others, of course, as well, but I think those two are um, highly used. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Dan. Any other questions, anyone? So uh, I, I'm experiencing a failure of imagination, sorry to say that, but how would you actually use a Raspberry Pi microcontroller? I understand interfacing it with the language, but I, I don't I don't see how you would actually use this in the real world. Just just some examples of you know possibilities, if, if you don't mind. Uh, for sure, um, we uh, for example we are, we are um, developing a, a embedded um, device to for um, give an example to to control the um, pressure. To uh, of the tire of the vehicle, you know. Um, then we can um, put some sensors and uh, read the, 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 the pressure of the, the tire of the vehicle and uh, make some controls uh, up them, okay? Then we, uh, when we think about the uh, small embedded uh, device that we can uh, connect to via Bluetooth in an application, in an application in the, the, the mobile, uh, and uh, we have a, uh, have a different, uh, you know, um, possibilities to to use the, the microcontroller as well. I also have some examples, John, if you want. 
if that's okay for any of you. Oh, for sure. Um, so like at my house, I have an electric vehicle charger and it's run on an Arduino and it, um, like the way electric vehicle chargers work is they communicate with a car using PWM to, and the car tells it to kind of, um, allow the energy to flow. It's kind of like a really smart switch. And then all the energy conversion from the AC power to the DC that the car needs is, um, done on board the vehicle. And so the, something like an Arduino, a microcontroller is totally capable of communicating and doing PWM and opening circuits and all that type of stuff. So you can create little devices like that, right? Uh, you, you, you can actually use uh, to send a, an email or to send a message uh, through the internet if some uh, critical values are, are reading at the temperature. <laughs> about that uh, no, no problem that uh, we can you know uh, read a temperature and, and send a, a an alert or a message from the internet to the to the your mobile if the some value are uh, achieved and so on um this kind of application can i share another example sure sure uh so uh like uh, back at home, uh, I always have a problem whenever um, the water fills into the tank which sits on the roof of the house, uh, water spills over, comes down to the ground, and my mother looks at it and say, oh, the tank is full, and then she would go and turn off the water pump. So that would be a good problem to solve using this uh, uh, control system where I can put a sensor on top of the tank where it will measure its level. And when level reaches a certain point, I can trigger a, a, a valve or a switch using the controller to shut down the motor automatically. That way, my mother does not have to wait for water to come down and hear the sound. It, it sounds like knowledge of sensors is a, almost a prerequisite for working with these because I I am not very familiar with the various sensors people are talking about. Uh, but I should say my background is web programming, so I haven't needed to use the uh, you know sensors in in that area. Some but. of the sensors are on board though, like he was showing the temperature. Right. Room, right. So that the temperature sensor is like built onto the microcontroller. So it already has some of that capability. So if you wanted to yeah, do something when it gets too hot or something, you can uh -huh. program it to do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Actually, we we have a lot of um application in IoT as well. Um small devices to uh, you know control a, a refrigerator or something like that. It's everything is about the microcontrollers that it's more cheaper, um, less power consumption and uh, efficient for some applications as well. Any other questions, anyone? I saw Rich uh, posted a video about fun stuff with microcontrollers. Thanks for posting that, Rich. Any other questions for Renio? Okay, thank you so much, Afrenio, for the oh. great uh, demo on, um, yeah, using MicroPython and it, yeah, I really like the being able to see the video of uh, in, in action and and uh, see you add the, the different code to it. So thanks again for presenting. Thank you, you Dan, for the opportunity to show here, and um, uh, I'm open to anyone that can uh, contact me to talk about technology, talk about Arduino, microcontrollers, Python, and so on. Thank you, everybody, to uh, join to with us today. And thank you, Dan.